Hey guys, welcome back. This is Cody with The Connected Camper. Today, we're actually going to be doing a light renovation to my camper. And by light, I mean I'm taking out about half of the floor plan and redoing the passenger or the driver's side of the trailer. So I'm going to give you a light tour of the inside in its current state, gonna go over the existing floor plan and the future floor plan, then I'm gonna actually show me going through and making these renovations. So stick around and I think you'll like what you see. This is a Forest River Patriot Edition 1.6 BHS. As we walk into the door, you'll see we have the dinette exactly opposing the entry door here. We have an RV short queen mattress up in the front. This section, these cabinets, and the mini split will not be affected by the renovation at all. However, the dinette is going to be taken into consideration for the renovation. The upper cabinets up here will remain the same. Those will remain in place. The bunks back here behind the dinette will be getting adjusted for the renovation. The kitchen is going to all remain the same. All the cabinets, the mini fridge, everything on this side is going to remain the same. And so is the bathroom in the very back. So what we're going to be doing in this renovation is we're going to be shortening these bunks. They're actually going to be shortened to probably about right here um, on both the top and the bottom. Now you might say, what's the use of the bunks at that point? Well, I have my inverter and battery storage below the bunks back there. However, everything right here is largely empty space up in front. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these right here so that way I get more interior space, but then also back there can remain Ranger's bed when he goes to bed at night. He does not like sleeping with me in my bed. He likes jumping back here and sleeping and he goes all the way in the back there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shorten this and leave that as a dog sleeping area. Now up here, this is going to largely just be wasted space. However, what we're going to use this for is just clothes storage, duffel bag storage, uh, book bag storage when we are out traveling. Now, the nice thing is, is that in this trailer, this wall does not go all the way to the ceiling like some of the other brands have. If it did go all the way to the ceiling, I would be concerned about it potentially being a load-bearing wall. However, it being short like this, it has no weight on it. The only thing that we have to relocate, only things rather, is the mini split holder here, which is just screwed in here. That's going to be super easy. The thermostat, which is also going to be super easy. All we have to do is disconnect a couple wires in there, and then we can move that to probably this wall right here, right over here. Um, and then our Victron Smart Shunt screen is going to just get relocated to the to the wall down here. Now, I don't actually look at this too much. I actually, this integrates with Solar Assistant, um, so I'm really not too concerned about this getting relocated. And now I wanted to bring us back a level here and show you the original floor plan of my Forest River Patriot Edition 1.6 BHS. Now, on the screen here, you'll see that it's a wolf pup. Um, this has some slight deviations from what mine is like the refrigerator over here is a, a full-size rv refrigerator and not under the counter kind of wish mine had that however it doesn't um, however the nice thing is that the kitchen in this one doesn't have to be exactly accurate because we're not taking into consideration those areas so you can see here we have the queen bed to the right as we walk in the dinette and the bunk beds as i highlighted there now i'm going to bring you over and talk through the uh, new floor plan that I'm going to have proposed here. Now in our future floor plan, we are going to add in actually a 50 inch wide couch. Uh, we do have to take into consideration a wheel well that is right in this area. Uh, my trailer is not above the wheel wells. The wheel wells actually do cut up into the floor and, and you'll see those in, in some subsequent follow on videos here. Um, and then next to the couch, we're going to add in a desk. Now because of this wheel well here, this uh, driver's side outside leg is actually going to have to get trimmed up because it is going to be up on top of the wheel well. Now, the the desk and the couch are not going to be meant for an RV, and pretty much any couch or desk that is in an RV is going to have to be secured to the floor and or walls. And so you're going to see that as we're getting this furniture added in here as well. 
Then as I mentioned, the dog bed here, Ranger's Place, is going to be back in the back here. Um, and then above that is going to be just kind of that half bunk that does not have pretty much any use other than serving duffel bags, book bags, additional storage, things like that. Now, this floor plan works well for me because it is just Ranger and I that are going out and camping. We rarely have anyone else with us, and so if we do, they're going to be in a tent. So now that we have the floor plans reviewed and you guys have an idea of what I want to get put in place, we can start taking some of these things out. So I'm actually going to speed this up. However, along the way, I'm going to kind of cut back in and show you some considerations to have as you're going through uh, a renovation like this, especially on a trailer like mine. A very specific consideration for my trailer is this wheel well right here, as well as the shore power connection right there. So my trailer is fully inverted. So this shore power connection that comes out of the junction box there goes directly to the input on the inverter, or right here rather. And this goes to the RV breaker box, and this is the output from the inverter. Now, this wheel well is actually going to pose a bit of an issue for fitting the furniture in here that I'm hoping to fit. However, I did get lucky and did find a couch that will fit in the space between this wheel well and my bed on that side. So now we're going to focus on getting this all removed and get it all freed up. And then we're going to focus on getting this wall here taken out. So for the top bunk here, you can see that it is just secured to the walls with these screws going into the wall. But then also, here's our thermostat cable, and it actually goes down into the wall right here. That's actually going to work out really well, because then I'm just going to put my thermostat right here, um, which is actually going to end up being directly above my desk, so it's going to work out great. And I'll put all of the other, the uh, mini split controller right next to it, so that way we have kind of all of our heat and cooling controls right there. That's how thick our walls are in our trailers. Don't think that they're any thinner than that. These things are very thick, um, so you can reuse these screws. And that's actually what I plan on doing, because I don't want to send any screws through the siding on the outside. I'm going to reuse these things when I'm re-anchoring things to the wall in here.
So a little bit of a roadblock here. However, that's to be expected when we're working on an RV renovation because these trailers are not built like a house. These, well, actually they probably are built like a house. However, what happened is this bunk, I was going to remove these bunks and I was going to rebuild them. So that way I can take these out and then be able to put them back in, uh, in their original state. However, I'm going to have to deviate from that plan because this bunk is actually secured in the back on the inside of this wall. So I would have to take this wall apart to be able to remove this. I'm not going to do that. It doesn't make sense to me why they would have screwed it in there that way, um, other than potentially them just having access to it and it being easier at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this top bunk right about here. Um, I'm going to remove this nice little uh, padded balance here. Um, and then we're going to uh, cut it off right here. And then this will be where we have some free space for our desk eventually. Um, it will overhang by about eight inches or so right here. Um, but that really isn't going to affect me all that much. The bottom is actually going to overhang that much as well. If you have any little buttons like this, um, they are actually just nails that are over top of screws in the wood. So you just need to take a flathead screwdriver like this, get it just underneath there, take a hammer, tap it under there, and then pry it off just like you're prying out a nail. guys that'll do it for today's video as you can see we've made a nice big mess in here we've got really good progress done we've got our thermostat relocated our mini split uh, remote relocated um, we've got a lot of things remaining to do now in our next videos you're going to see us finish up the demolition here that means trimming up our bottom bunk getting our electrical relocated and getting it ready for the new furniture so if you're interested in videos like this in the future, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Send this video along to your friends or family that are interested in renovating their trailer. For now, I'm Cody with The Connected Camper. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.